So let's apply these techniques, finding general solutions and determining the stability of the equilibrium for, for these systems. And so it's worth pointing out here that um, when we have systems that look like x prime is equal to ax plus by and y prime is equal to cx plus dy, that there's only one equilibrium and it's going to be the origin. So when we're working with these systems, we're always going to have one equilibrium at the origin. And so that's the only um, point where we're going to need to determine uh, the stability of that equilibrium. Okay, so um, the first thing that we would want to do would be to uh, say, let's find out what the eigenvalues are for the corresponding matrix of coefficients. So um, what we have here would be our characteristic equation would be what we get when we take the determinant of the matrix 5 minus lambda minus 3, 3 minus 1 minus lambda. And we set that equal to 0. So um, skipping some of those details, let me just say that that characteristic equation, when you simplify that, would look like uh, lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4, which in other words is lambda minus 2 squared. So here we have one uh, repeated real root. That root is going to give me an eigenvalue, which is lambda is equal to 2. So since this is bigger than zero, and that's my only eigenvalue, we can see that this is going to be an unstable source. And so if that's all I was asked to do, determine whether the, the origin is stable or not, all we need to do is find the eigenvalue, and then based on um, what we determined in the previous slide about that eigenvalue, what is that going to tell me? about the stability of the solution. Okay, so in these cases, when we get, for example, a repeated real root, again, I would not suggest that you try and find the eigenvectors for these situations, but instead, um, we can use the technique that this is gonna tell me um, that my solution for x is gonna be c1 e to the 2t plus c2 times t e to the 2t. And I know that y should look similar. Just these constants that I'm putting, these undetermined constants a and b, they are going to depend on the values for c1 and c2. So I could take this information and say plug it in to the first differential equation, which is x prime is equal to 5x minus 3y. And so remember, um, in order to do that, you would need to figure out that x prime is equal to 2c1 e to the 2t plus uh, c2 e to the 2t plus 2c2t e to the 2t. And so you take all of this stuff you plug it in for x. You take your suggested solution for x, you plug that in to the equation for x, you take the suggested solution for y, you plug it in for y, and then you group all of your terms together. Um, and let me just say, if you wanna check your work on something like this, um, what you should see in this case is that um, a, the coefficient for a is equal to um, c1 minus one third c2, and b is equal to c2. And from all of that, then you can plug this back in for b, and you can plug that back in for a. 
Um, so this was some of the work that, that we did um, on last week's notes. Um, so I'm taking a bit of an abbreviated look at it here. But the point that I want to make is for these cases, when you have a repeated real root, um, you don't need to find the eigenvectors. Just use the same technique that we thought about last time. So I'm going to put one more example up, which is a, um, an example of a 3x3 three three system, um, just to see how these ideas can be extended um, into much bigger systems of differential equations. Um, so if you've had some linear algebra, in particular, you've worked with matrices larger than 2x2, two two, go ahead, jump into the next example. If you have not looked at 3x3 three three matrices before, then don't worry, it's not required. You can just stop here.